you very much for taking the time to be with me. Uh, so let's just ask the, the big question on the table tonight. Will this ceasefire last the 72 hours it's supposed to? Well, if we look at the past, Israel always said yes and always uh, kept the ceasefire. Hamas has a strange way to look at ceasefires. Usually we seize and they fire. But hopefully this 72 hours will allow us to be able to move to the next stage. And, and I want to ask you about this, because Hamas militants told one of our reporters on the ground, quote, that this is the war to end all wars. Your former ambassador to the United States, Michael Oren, said uh, this war must be total. Israel must be allowed to crush Hamas no matter how long it takes. Those two sides don't sound like a ceasefire, a, a, anything more than a humanitarian ceasefire has any chance here. Well, I think one should see it with the motive. If you think, you know, with, beyond the words, what motive does Israel have in Gaza? Have we find, found oil in Gaza, natural resources? Maybe they're digging so deep that they might just find oil. But seriously, Israel went out of Gaza when I headed the Israeli Foreign Service never to look back. In the sense, all we want is a simple equation. If it's going to be quiet in Israel, it's going to be quiet in Gaza. So we have absolutely no motive to continue this. We have one thing, and those are the terror tunnels, which the international community looks at those terror tunnels, in my fair assumption, with tunnel vision. Hence, narrow view, putting all the blame on Israel and ignoring Hamas's war crimes that they're doing. So if we continue looking at this this way, mm -hmm. The, we won't see the light at the end of the tunnel, but only dark and uh, destruction. So, so, and obviously you're talking about the tunnels that they have built Terror between uh, between Gaza and Israel. That's true. In terms of the ceasefire, the 72-hour ceasefire, is Israel firmly on board, signed, yes, Israel will observe that? Well, you know that formally the Israeli cabinet, cabinet did not decide yet, mm -hmm. but I'm sure uh, you'll hear a decision from Israel very soon. Uh, but from what we know in the past, it was very clear. Uh, Israel abided by all the ceasefire, including the humanitarian ones, including the ones that Hamas itself initiated and mm -hmm. broke. So we, so have we should si expect Israel to accept because they've accepted before. Yeah, we, we have seen the following. We have seen Israel, you know, bombarded with 2,800 rockets until now. And this is absolutely amazing. You know, in the street just uh, today, in one street, 28 buildings, 19 were booby-trapped, and three mm -hmm. Israeli soldiers died in that, and dozens were, were wounded, just to explain to the world what we're up against every day. And, and, and let, me, let me ask you this, because um, humanitarian reasons are, the, the, that's what's behind the expected ceasefire. As you said, Israel expected to accept this when it formally makes a decision shortly. Uh, but the United Nations says these humanitarian reasons are caused by Israel. The UN Human Rights High Commissioner spoke earlier today, and here's how she put it. The text occurring now on homes, schools, hospitals, UN premises. Um, none of this appears to me to be accidental. There's been clear warnings issued to Israel. They uh, appear to be defying deliberate defiance of uh, obligations that uh, international law imposes on Israel. What do you have to say to that? I have to say to that you know, to show your viewers here. Something we, which we is... We have this. I know you brought in which, which these is, pictures. Yeah, yeah, which is really interesting. 27 meters, 34 meters away from two elementary schools and a high school, a launcher by Hamas. Right, well, hold on, there, Ambassador. I'm gonna, I, I will let you make that point. I yeah. do, though, want to... Do we have Wolf Blitzer with us? We have Wolf. Wolf, uh, I believe you have the breaking news from Prime Minister Netanyahu. We have word from Israeli officials that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the Defense Minister of Israel, in accordance with the authority granted by the Security Cabinet to the Prime Minister, the statement uh, that we're getting from Israeli officials is that Israel has accepted the U.S. UN proposal for a 72-hour humanitarian ceasefire beginning at 8 a.m. local time. That's a little bit uh, less than six hours from now. So Israeli officials are now telling CNN that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has agreed to this U.S. U.N. 72-hour humanitarian ceasefire. This is the first official statement we're getting from Israeli officials. You got the U.S. You got the Israeli ambassador to the United Nations there, Aaron, with you. Uh, I'm sure he's. Uh, 
uh, he, he probably knew this was coming, but we now have the official yes. word from the government of Israel that they have accepted what John Kerry and Ban Ki-moon have proposed. All right, Wolf Blitzer, thank you very much. And Ambassador, you had indicated that that was the direction this was going to go, but we now formally have this. So Israel's on board with a ceasefire. But uh, the United Nations says the, the reason that there is a humanitarian disaster is because Israel is uh, deliberately targeting civilians. You're trying to show me that the militants from Hamas are firing at Israel from very close to elementary schools. Yeah, and that's important because everyone, you know, talks about, uh, about targeting of uh, innocent civilians. The Israeli army does not target innocent civilians, uh, period. Look at the difference here. We have 27 meters and 34 meters a launcher from two elementary schools and a high schools in, in Gaza. This is a terrain Hamas is using and abusing not just their own population as human shields, but using that to launch missiles against Israel day in and day out. We are trying the best we can. And I have to tell you so also now personally. It's not that, that, so I just want to, because a lot of our viewers have heard Israel say that uh, Hamas would score, sto store weapons in the schools. Oh. And now you're saying, I mean, because the UN has said that the schools that Israel has struck did not have weapons in them. So you're saying it's because, not because of the weapons, but because there were militants nearby. Well, they're two different things. One, yes. A, they did store rockets and, and explosives in, uh, in schools, in three UNRWA schools. And secondly, they do that, they stored uh, in mosques, in hospitals, in, uh, in different buildings, which were civilian buildings. So we go into an area which is completely full of explosives, also one found with a baby crib. And we have to, basically, Israeli soldiers have to find the way under so fire you, from the vicinity of civilian uh, So let me ask you areas. about how, how morally, though, you get around this. So if, if you're the side that doesn't have as, as strong weapons and you don't have the Iron Dome, you'll maybe it is in your interest to have civilians killed that might help your cause but if you're israel and you have the power and you have the iron dome and you have a few militants firing from near a school is it is it still okay to fire when you might hit that school with three thousand innocent civilians in it but look it's uh, you have to understand that uh, there's ready troops out there and they're being shot at from mosques and in seconds from place to place with booby traps and they're responding there's no one in israel so you're saying there's no one who actually takes the time to say, wait, do we want to do this? No, there's no one in Israel, any soldier that goes out and tries uh, specifically to target civilians. That doesn't happen in the IDF. And when we make mistakes, it takes us time, but we stand up and say and take assume responsibility. But it's important for you viewers and yourself to understand that Israel does not want this. All we want is to live in peace with our neighbors. And we're trying to reach out to uh, everyone who really wants to make peace with us, but we are holding the shield of David very, very close to our chest because only a secure Israel can achieve overall peace in this region. All right, Ambassador Prosor, thank you very much for taking the time.